Fierce Earth presents One Head Too Many. Your name is Lou Bridges. You live in a plain, unfurnished room, in an ordinary apartment house in Upper Manhattan. Nothing unusual has happened to you for a long time, till one night, blinding flash of light wakes you up. You leap out of bed, a run to your window, not quite knowing what to expect. It couldn't have been lightning. There's not a cloud in the sky. I didn't hear any explosion. Then you hear, heard it, on your roof, directly above your head, voices, talking in a low, strange, gruttled tongue. It's something, one or something on the roof. Who would it be up there at this time of night? It takes you only a minute to put your clothes on. You walk up a short flight of stairs to the roof, and then on the roof, bathed in the light of the full moon, you see it, a flying saucer. Even as you see the saucer, a blinking eye peering out from the half-closed vow plate, see you too. There really are such things. Before you had any time to collect your wits, in a muddy roar and another blinding flash of light. And you find yourself alone on the roof, shaking your head and wondering if it really happened. It's gone. I only want to saw it. Where did it come from? And what does it want? Then one and a half a million charts happens. You are certainly looking east towards Central Park. You see it's another flash of light. And in the reflection of light is a flying saucer. It's a saucer again. It's landing in Central Park. You race down the stairs like a madman. You find out. You must find out the secret of the flying saucer. So you get there before it's gone. I see you got this time, so you won't see me. It's hard to believe it. The whole city of New York, you, Lou Bridges, are probably only one who saw the saucer land. It looks as if it's coming down the near, near 86th Street entrance. You look at the old watch. It's 3.35 a.m. The whole city's still asleep. If anyone else saw it, they'd probably figure it out. It's just that I, it, I was right. There is nothing. There is. There is next to those, those trees. But this time you see more than just a saucer. This time you see the occupants of the strange craft moving around. You realise why it's landed again. They cluster around the saucer. They, they've got queer looking tools. They must be a pair of a machine. And then suddenly an eye turns your way. A large, blinking, staring eye. I, it can see me. I can feel it. You turn your body. You feel your body go limp. Out of control as your feet carry you towards the saucer, propelled by the magnetic force, the thin green ray which shines at you from the ship. I got to walk to the ship, can't help myself. Green ray sapping my willpower. I'm trapped. You get closer. The weird saucer, the study of shapes, the creatures from within it, seem to form similar to human beings. Except for one difference, their arms and legs don't bend like the earth man's. So they appear to be rubbery, like a lizard's. But instead of one head, each body is two. Two ugly, grotesque heads, each one containing evil, old, dead, set, penetrating eyes. Greetings, earth man. Let us introduce ourselves. I am Pro, leader of the first Martian experimentary forces. You speak our language? Naturally. We've been studying it for months while we cruised your land. What are you doing here? Why do you want to us? Once again you seem to have no control over your feet as they follow row inside the flying saucer. Come inside and see for yourself. It's time for us to part now before we're seen by others. But I don't want to go with you. Their head snaps back. An explosion or a sting and blow, but one of the rows, snake-like limbs, a blow, you powerless to resist. Never refuse to obey a Martian's order, Earthling. I ordered the, the ship to depart. Well, well, sir, stations, the order is depart. 
through the transparent viewpoint. You watch the ground fall away. Amazing rate of speed. It's order of execution, sir. As the earth stems to grow, perceivably smaller, you're conscious of you no know, feeling of flying. It seems instead as though you're merely floating through space. I feel light as a feather. I don't hear any motors. We don't use motors, stupid. Our ship is both propelled by magnetic gravity force. We are hundreds of years ahead of you, Earthlings. You shall answer our questions. We, the first mercenary military force, have come to the conquer Earth before you develop spaceships of your own and can conquer us. How can one flying saucer conquer the Earth? We have hundreds of others the same as this one. Ready to strike at a moment's notice. This is a flagship, but I row. We should all attack to order, to order to attack. Well, what are you waiting for? We have been waiting because your Earth things are too strong. You have automatic weapons, radar, and many nicks other scientific devices which enable you to defend yourselves against us. We could, we win eventually, of course, but both our forces would be sadly defeated. Both our peoples would suffer great losses. So we decided to catch an earthling and give him a message to deliver to his people. And you, and you are that earthling. And what is the message? You will tell the people about us and you tell them that I have changed my mind about attacking Earth. Instead, I would want audience with the leaders of the Earth. Discuss ways of our two planets existing in peace. You mean I could go back with a message that you could prevent a war between our planets? Yes, to go back to Earth in this little spacecraft. It'd be all the proof you need that your story is true. For your, your scientists will know that it's not made of Earth on Earth. How will I communicate with you to give you an answer? Your spacecraft controls are set to return to this Earth. This ship in 24 hours, you'll be on it when it returns. And if I'm not right on it, I'll the hatch. If you're not in a spacecraft in 24 hours, I'll give you orders to attack the Earth. It all depends on me. Fire the spacecraft. In an instant, an instant, you're heading back to Earth at measurable speed. Every cross control of spacecraft is automatic you have nothing to do but sit finding a spacecraft dies at short stop the same spot in Central Park you exactly 4.15am you step out into Earth again from the flying saucer first thing you do is to drag the raft to what was the lake and cover darkness any proof that they really are men for Mars is this, this small spacecraft with a sight of relief, you throw it into the deepest part of the river, where it sinks instantly. Then I will never know, know, know. Then race across the sm- small mill at great speed, and the ideal dear germinating head. I got to call Joe right away. Back in your room, you pick up the telephone, dial a number, trembling fingers. Then, hello, Joe. We're right. Those there are Martians in those flying saucers. They won't hear if they don't hear me. Twenty-four hours are going to attack the Earth. Then you talk. You keep scratching the side of your face, just trying to pull the skin off. You see how wonderful it is. We let them attack. Let the Martians and the Earthlings fight each, uh, fight and destroy each other. And we Moon people can conquer them both. Our strength has been sapped. It's a chance we've waited a thousand years for.